Cheers to all I'm busy with all of this. This is my brother-in-law's place and he had a bit of a glyphosate damage by mistake. Thought it was one type of herbicide and it was not. This is the baddie of herbicides. It will kill everything. I've clotted with NC32 and the small little patches that were damaged have grown back or close to growing back completely and these bigger patches are still being worked on but what I want to show you is even something hard tech like glyphosate you can see this is all weeds that have grown back it grows back before the grass and the same kind of thing happens to your grass when your grass is not thick and healthy then the weeds take advantage of the gap so now that there's a gap because of the glyphosate being put down it has opened an advantage just for those exact same weeds to grow back again uh, not from their old main stems or anything like that because you probably found that the root system was poisoned via the glyphosate but because of the seed that was left behind so in most of these broadleaf weed treatment scenarios you most likely will uh, need to do more than one application it's just not possible to get rid of uh, seeds um, you know to sterilize a seed is a really really complicated thing uh, and if you do that you're most likely sterilizing the soil as well so try try not to use things like glyphosate on your lawn use use the stuff that's designed for the weed in your specific type of grass Goedemiddag mensen, hope everyone's having a lucky Christmas it's about that time for me to put down my second session of the post emergent herbicides that are used to treat a whole bunch of broadleaf weeds in the yard so let's have a look if we are ready for round two okay so first thing that you're looking for is for the weeds to be big enough to actually get a good amount of cover from the spray of the herbicide when you put it down and in this case yes it is the second is does the grass oh never mind the hardy does does the grass look nice and healthy and you can tell it's sticking up nicely Blades need a bit of a sharpen again. Oh, it's time for a cylinder mower. But um, yeah, grass is looking nice and healthy. It's standing to attention. Uh, it's looking pretty green. We've got a bunch of wood sorrel, which is what the original problem was, uh, plus a bunch of other broadleaf weeds. And the majority of those broad leaves are now kaput. They are nowhere to be found. And then right up at the top of my yard, I've just I've just got one or two of these car key burrs that need to be addressed, so I'll come and spot spray those later. So, general idea is you spray herbicides in the morning because you'll have generally a little bit less wind. Number two, it is cooler, so the grass hasn't been stressed out by the heat during the course of a day. If you spray it at the end of the day and it's been under a lot of heat and wind stress, foot traffic and all that, you've basically kicked the grass while it's down when you put a herbicide onto it. So, do it in the morning, the grass is then strong. It then has a much better fighting chance uh, versus the weed which is getting nailed by the herbicide during the course of the day. This is not for any grassy type weeds, this is just broadleaf weeds. So paspalum, crabgrass, nutgrass, that kind of stuff will be addressed in different videos. I think I've already done one on crabgrass for manual extraction. We'll do a couple more on the different types later on. Yes, it's still the afternoon before. I'm just going to load this up with water and then put some arrow sorb into it just to pre-treat the tank again because there are going to be herbicides in here tomorrow morning. And then just to add to the afternoon before's work, we are just going to do some manual weeding and pull out some of the grassy type weeds just to aid the process. And you can see these like nutsedge, it comes out pretty easy if the ground is uh, going to allow it. That's not nutsedge. Oh, sorry, I'm aiming this camera in the wrong way. Wasn't watching it. So that's not much said. That is kukuyu, but in my case, I don't care. That can come out too. So we'll do a little bit of that as well. Just looking at this nut sedge more closely, you can see what it looks like from the crown. Nice, neat little root system. It sort of thins out towards the end, but it bunches up a lot here where my thumb is. You can feel it sort of like keeps the ground against it quite nicely there. So it's not. It's not an incredibly deep root system. That's probably why it pulls out relatively easily. If you look at the leaf, it's much shinier. Oh, you can see something's been eating it. I did see caterpillars in here the other day, but they don't seem to be doing too much damage. Um, and the RO sorb will take care of them anyway. But um, you can see how shiny this leaf is versus Kukuyu. 
there's another one. So you can clearly tell just by skimming through it that that is Kakuyu. And then if I give it a bit of a proper pull, you can clearly see that's Kakuyu. And well, I do want that out. And then that is the nut sedge. Just gonna get your fingers down deep enough. And then there it is. And this one is actually quite shallow. But yeah, this, oh, it's Kakuyu. I need to sculpt it again. That's like 30 plus moles. Um, but you see, uh, I just want to show you guys something again. This is what my Kakuyu looks like in these horrendously deep parts. So in my, in my definition of horrendously deep, that is my first knuckle to the bottom of the green of the grass and then about 30 odd millimeters to the top of the blade. But nowhere do you see that woody stalk nowhere it does not happen like that and that is because once a month i give it that short mow i want to show you so check the crab grass it lies flat like this these always bunch in the middle so when you part all the kukuyu and whatnot growing over it then you'll find that that um, base like this but check there those are the seeds so that is how these guys are spreading. They have found sufficient nutri nutritional value in my soil and they are seeding. Naughty buggers. Okay, so nut sedge, very easy to remove by hand. The crab grass, you need a weeding tool to get down deep enough. Otherwise it just breaks on you. Uh, and definitely those seeds grow very close to the ground. Okay, so about 6.30. Uh, this is now the next day. And we're gonna put down some uh, super lawn weeder and peak and a little bit of orozorb as well I pre-treated pre -treated the tank last night and we're gonna get this down I just want to show you what it looks like at the moment it's slightly damp as you can see the majority of the garden is still in shade and yeah okay I was a little bit concerned that in the shade it was a bit wet but it seems to be perfectly fine only up at the top of the garden in the sun there's a little bit of dew happening but it's a tiny 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 but luckily the majority of the weeds are just there so that's fine and i'm not going to show tank mixtures and stuff like that just make sure you read your instructions on whatever it is that you're going to use and of course make sure to wear protective equipment and a mask and and or a buff and whatever it is that you can to cover as much skin as possible <laughs> Okay, whole yard is sprayed and I've washed off all of my equipment and uh, yeah, so I managed to get out, I think about two thirds of the bottle went out on this main section of the yard, uh, or less than two thirds, because it was quite a lot that I managed to put out everywhere else. I managed to do all my other lawn sections, although two of those sections didn't have any weeds in them except for like one little spot on one and one little spot on the other. So I went out into my roadside yard lawn and I sprayed the entire roadside lawn um, and my neighbors as well <laughs> well it helped the last time so I might as well do it again so kids are going to stay off this until it's completely dry and even then I might not let them back on it uh, we'll try and do it uh, we'll try and only let them back on again late in the afternoon if possible I'm gonna go take a cold shower now get all the gross stuff washed off me um, yeah just be safe Okie dokie, four o'clock in the afternoon, so it's been nine and a half hours that this stuff's been grafting. And uh, okay, let me try and get close. You can clearly, clearly see, which I'll get a better angle. Yeah, you can clearly tell that all of these little sorrel are properly toasted already. Okay, so we'll call that a success, uh, yeah. And three days from now, we might give it a mow, but we will give it a bit of a high nitrogen fertilizer. I haven't figured out exactly what I want to do with that yet, but we'll figure that one out in the next couple of days. Okay, and weeds like the khaki burr will obviously take a lot longer. If you have a look here, where are we? There we go. 
These are some of these other buggers that I pulled up. They are not yet. They are not yet ready to go, but it'll take a couple of days. Uh, it's always a bit longer for those khaki birds to get nailed, but uh, two or three days we'll start to see a bit of a turn on them. Just a little side note here. This is not a this is the herbicide that you should be using for this job type of video. This is a, what I am using for the job type of video. Uh, you need to just keep in mind that there are many different active ingredients that go into different types of herbicides and they all task, now they all have different tasks and they all target different weed groups or types or whatever you want to term them as uh, and they work at different rates. So there's always going to be a percentage or a value attached to a type of active ingredient and that determines how much you're going to be putting down, all that kind of stuff which is why it's important to always read the label. Uh, one product that says Super Lawn Weeder, there might be another product that also says Super Lawn Weeder, and they all do different things at different rates, um, or even similar things at different rates, or even similar things with lef, less or more efficacy than the other. Actually, most of the time you can use Dicamba, MCPA, 2,4-D, that'll do, it's a pretty good range of options to get rid of most weeds, but read the label. If you don't want to buy something fancy, just Go to your usual box store and uh, ask for a bit of help while you're there. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit the little notification bell and all that good stuff. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Yeah.